Hi, my name is Sarah. Uh, I'm trying to present a research I have been doing for the last uh, almost 30 years of uh, a different way of looking at the world languages. And um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Let's start from the beginning. The reason why I want to do this is I believe that we all share one single language core. We do not have different language families. The further you go back in, that will be our ancient core. No one is developed separately from the others. So no one has hierarchy over the other. So um, this is the basket starfish. And what I want you to pay attention is that, uh, that the core, because all these branches of our languages are just so intertwined that you can hardly pull one from the other without you know uh, damaging the whole thing and the present linguistic uh, model of uh, having different language family is actually uh, in my personal opinion is quite detrimental to our um, basic understanding of the world so i'm trying to present to you this eastern perspective and from uh, female and non-academic. And this is how I started my search. Uh, years ago, I studied art in Europe. And after that, you know, I pay a lot of attention to symbol. And then I spend a lot of time, you know, going around on my own to really remote places, observing how people use sound and how they deal with their material, how they deal with the objects. And, and after more than 30, almost 40 years, here are what I found. So I think we have the educated blindness because the illiterate people, they read visual clues very sharply in objects and forms, very different from the way we read uh, things now. Without words now, without writing, if you go into a place, all of us feel lost because we are not used to take up visual clues. And it's the opposite that happens with the illiterate people. Um, Words come to words. Uh, this is what I think. When there is a big war that's destroyed all our civilization, it will be the illiterate people who can survive much better than us because they read things much better than us. So um, in order to convince you that, uh, that we share a single core, uh, gradually we will be looking at some different points. We will be looking at uh, why the GJ sound are always interchangeable. And then gradually, you know, in other uh, episodes, I will try to show you how birds become an important part of the language formation. And I will show you this uh, very quick uh, chart. And the English, and no, I mean the Western languages, you know, mainly uh, concentrate on this part and to do with the hard G and the soft G, the G and the J and the Z and then the Ch, the Z or this uh, dental sound, whatever. But you, as you can see, all the writing of this part of the world, you know, all came down to the observation of birds in certain way. And I just want to show you what we will be looking at gradually. And the other thing is, uh, one thing very important I need you to understand is the changing reality versus the stagnant sound. As human beings developed, we started from sitting on the ground, gradually we move up the, from the very origin, from the piece of grass to how we learn to control, to use them, uh, to dry them, to weave them into a floor mat, a basket, a carpet, if you're in a cold climate, and or Kilim, or if you are in India, the Kata, and uh, which is the floor mat, or we gradually move ourselves up, you know, the Gueridon is the, uh, the French word, you know, for a co low coffee table. And we gradually move up and then the cathedral with the, the root of the, 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 the cut, the Greek word for seats, for a seat or sitting down. And even though you see a big, huge building and it is actually meaning the seat 
of the fish, okay? So, and gradually, because of this building, we become casa and castle. All this came from that piece of little grass that we gradually uh, learn how to dominate. So, uh, we can only borrow words. And the sounds that we use as to catch up with the real changing reality. That's why you can see the very consistent um, um, of this, of consistence of this, this G, J, G, G sound, all following uh, the meanings. You can, uh, the, all the symbols right here, are the, um, sorry, all the symbol right here are real symbol or real writings from uh, Sumerian to Chinese to Egyptian hieroglyph to linear uh, B and also Sanskrit, Tibetan and also Greek. And with the exception, the Greek, you know, uh, use that as a P sound. And but then it isn't new either, you know, because the P and the B is also uh, totally related to the base, you know, since very ancient time, but that has to go into another line. Okay. So and first of all, I want, uh, other than the basic thing that I want you to understand, you know, with other episodes that I might be able to create in the future, uh, in this first one, I want you to understand how you should look at symbols. The context of symbols are very, very important. And for say, if I give you uh, a symbol like this without any context, you know, uh, but don't read it as an X. So, and I, if I want to show you an action like that, if I'm an Egyptian, I can show you the symbol. It actually means, you know, a whirling around or turning around. The Egyptian use a W sound, but I'm not dealing with W sound right here. So I skip the sound. Or I would tell I or if I want to tell you an action like that, another kind of movement, which is different. Or if I am Chinese, I can show you these two symbols. Um, related to the sound of F, sin or sin, okay? So it's actually a trailing movement that way and joining two threads into one. Or if I show you a symbol like that, showing you exactly the same kind of motion, or I can use another symbol and to show you exactly the same kind of symbol. And, but if you are an alphabet reader, you are in danger because you, are, you start to read them as alphabet. And uh, when you look at symbol, I need you to take alphabet off your head because a lot of them at the very beginning, they are uh, symbols in action. They are concepts alive, they are living concepts. So you need to take those off your head at the very beginning before they finally stuck with the sound and became alphabet. So uh, also to uh, express uh, the very early knowledge of thread making, the ancient Egyptian have this uh, symbol. And of course, you know, it has to do with uh, turning around with the helix system. And then it uh, actually become a lot of work uh, to do with thread, which in ancient Egyptian is he, and also in Chinese is hai, and, and to do with all kinds of tying down or the head, head, put in, in, in Arabic, or to do with the rope, the thread, the string, and the tie. So, um, and as concept, it's already presenting to you the turning and the spinning concept. Or as other concept, it will tell you a helix movement, or tell you a, 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 a heart, an unmoving heart of a trailing motion, okay? So how about if I'm not talking about thread, I'm actually talking to you about uh, another concept like that. And if you are Greek, you can also read it as a, uh, well, they will spell it as CH, okay? But it's a her sound. So uh, if it's a her sound, and then I, how about if I present it to you like that? And it's actually to show you a very simple message of meeting or it's opposite, it's a cross, segregation to stop you from going forward. So the same symbol can move, can mean it's opposite depending on how you interpret it. And if we go back to the thread, I can bring you the ancient uh, Hebrew or what they, or they think the Phoenician symbol of he sound also. And definitely it has to do with the, 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 the rope, the thread, the string. And then because of that, it's closely tied with the control or the uh, uh, ancient Hebrew also already, you know, turn it 90 degrees like that. And very easily, if you're walking in the middle of nowhere, suddenly you see a rope, 
uh, in front of you, definitely uh, you get the message. It is to stop you from going forward. So, um, but to do with the string and the and the yoke, and you will see the idea of the uh, the I mean yoking or yoga. Yoga uh, from the Indian perspective is definitely to do with control, tying something down, not in the Western modern way of uh, putting on very beautiful uh, exercise clothes and lying on the mat and meditate. As a different thing is to control your mind and then to 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 tie something down. So uh, looking at these symbol, you know, the first if you line, if you look at them, it's uh, not as English as, uh, but as um, uh, abstract symbol. And the second line is real writing. And you are already dealing with a number of sounds connected to them. The first is the turning. The, the, the second one is the S sound. The third one will be the H sound. And the fourth one will be the Y sound already, okay? So just that tiny little cross like that, whether you put it this way or you put it that way, sometimes it can mean very different thing or depends on, on how you understand the message. And sometimes a very different messages are sent uh, by the same way. So uh, these are two images, one from the Hittite, the others from the Indian, separated by time and spaces. But you can see the same share thing is that they use the crossing of the legs to tell you something. And in Chinese, there is a writing like that. If you look up in the Ch ancient Chinese dictionary, it it precisely said cross leg. And the present writing is like that. And the Chinese use this word for two different ways. One is to mean something friendly, to mean copulation, to mean communication, or to mean, you know, your connection with someone else. And in a negative way, it can also mean to fight or to mean a uh, battle, or also to mean something negative with your enemy. So either is with friends or with enemy in the two different extremes, it all depends on the context. And if I give you a Chinese message, uh, image like that, this is uh, the ancient uh, legendary ancestor of the Chinese intertwined as two snake form. And of course, you can also see the infinity form also there because after copulation, and there's also, you know, the bringing infertility and infinity of heritage. Okay. So, uh, but if I go to the other side, I show you some, you know, in Greek, you very obviously two little kids is doing the exercise of combating or, or competition. They are crossing arms right here and you will see that you know people are trying to give you different messages all depending on the messages uh, all depends on the context and if you look at the greek word this is the word mahi mahi is an, a battle a battle is only between two okay it's not a war uh the greek word for war is polemos polemos you can hear it clearly is poly poly is to do with many parties this mahi is to do with Two. First of all, the, there is this very clear X right there to cross, uh, the cross right there to tell you that it's crossing arm, okay, that this is not something good. And the other thing you can, right thing you can look at is a Chinese, is, is an English word mix. The mixed word, why is, the, is there an X, is also in a way a visual message telling you that some different entity crossing each other blended together okay or you can read the English word Mary Mary is the, the getting together of two entity and then you can see clearly that mommy ma right here in a way carry the message of a dual two so let's look at this and the this slide right here I will show you how you jam things into one to make some uh, things easier to count to simplify something so first of all to deal with that ma sound I will show you this ma in Cantonese I use Cantonese sound because uh, sometimes the Mandarin uh, sound uh, shifted a little bit uh, from, for example, from G to J, and that's a little bit difficult for me to show the, the, the connection. So I mainly use Cantonese sound. Um, the sound Ma, as you can see, is two little kids right there, and it means twin, and also means end, and also means together. The other Chinese way is uh, saying 
together or marriage is gim. Gim is, as you can see, being an agricultural society, you will see that the hen is grabbing two stocks together to mean putting, uh, grabbing things together. Well, I will take care of that because uh, the ma right here in Arabic, in Greek, in ancient, uh, I mean in Hebrew, and also in Slavic and Germanic languages, they are all mommy, met, whatever. It's all to do with, uh, with, okay, together with. So you will see that at least there are two entities together. And I wanted to show you because uh, Thomas also in the Bible means a train. Okay, so you will see that in the ancient, in literal society, they actually depend more on their ears. So it's very easy for them to group sounds together to convey their meaning. Okay, let's get back to the uh, jam or gim. Okay, in the Hebrew, it comes to gam. Gam is actually means together and also end and width, okay, the same way. And even if you break it down according to the modern linguistic way of saying, oh, im is the suffix of a dual or m is the suffix of the dual. So you will see that the gam right here also follows that linguistic uh, grammar, grammatical gra uh, rule, okay? So, but the gam and the gim means exactly the same. And, Gamma is actually, uh, if you look at the form, you can see very clearly also the two joins into one. But how can you also look at, understand it? It's by the word gamos. Gamos in Greek is mean marriage. Marriage became the English word monop uh, monogamy uh, or polygamy. And you can see very clearly uh, the linkage right there. Or you can look at the Latin word, you know, the horoscope, Gemini. Gemini is uh, two together, a twin, okay? So sometimes either, either you are talking about brothers and sisters, sibling twin, or twin as a couple uh, mar in marriage, twin, okay? So you will see the gum, the hachi change to the soft G reading, okay? The Gemini. Okay, so let's take the ma away to give room to the Sanskrit. The Sanskrit uh, twin is yama. As you can see, the J, the gem, Gemini, also softened to become Yama. Yama is the twin. And then Sanskrit also have a word yoga. Yoga also links to the word yoga, yok, when you tie two things together, yuj, okay? Yuj to, together to become a couple. This is mean couple. And, or you can have another way of saying is jampati. Jampati, the most important part is in front, the jam, and, and it means husband or wife. So, and now it, we look at Arabic. Arabic, the, the word jama. And if you are Arab, you will easily find in your own language all this jama, jamia, jam, jama, jam, jamia, and also to do with the, the mosque, uh, the university where people are grouped together as a whole, or you will see that, uh, um, and, and it's always to do with grouping. And jama here is uh, already a little bit to the, the copulation side is talking about sexual relationship, okay? And it's a little bit vulgar to talk about it and as people think, and, and but I can easily link it to the Greek word gamo, the very vulgar street language of U-F-U-C-K. But you can see clearly that gamo is definitely from gamos. And why is our uh, people consider gamo very rude and gamos acceptable? It all depends on the how the, the local people take a word, okay? But as someone from outside, you can see that the gam, jam, jam, gam, they are all being in uh, putting two together as a unification or, or copulation, whatever you, and however you understand it, okay? So the GJY sound, again, I, I pointed out that they always interchange. And now let's uh, pretend that we don't read anything. You know, we, 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 we are illiterate. Look at this form right here. Don't look at it as a Y, okay? So it is joining two things together. Or the Sanskrit Ya, Ya, okay, the Y, 
you can see that it's, it's definitely look at to you as a why. And now if you also, you can also look at it as a why, for the Greek, we look at it as a girl. And, and, but if you don't know how to read, you can see things join as one, or I can bring you the Chinese symbol of joining two into one. And all this together, you really don't need to be able to read or write to understand the message. So um, the Chinese symbol came down to this word sin or sin. And you can actually easily link it to the Greek symbol, sin, symphony, all these are the same core. So it means united things as one. Or the other way, which I won't go further, is to um, putting three as one. As you can see, we have other way of putting three, but we treat it as a group. So we have this psalm. Actually, it is a number three. Psalm and the Mandarin, they will say psalm. Psalm is the same as the Greek. If, uh, if I am a Greek and then I say psalm, I mean together with. Okay, so basically there's a slight subtle difference, but uh, if you follow the sound, sometimes you can get the general meaning very, very easily. So um, I think I will stop after this slide because it's getting a little bit too heavy, perhaps. Um, what I'm trying to say is that you have to know who you are. I'm asking, who are you? From where you are looking at this world, from where you interpret words. And if I give you a picture like this, and with all those lines in the middle, blocking you or whatever you, however you understand it. And if you are looking from the outside, if you're trying to go into that space, for you, it is a hindrance, it is a hurry because those ropes, those uh, threats are, are threatening you, okay? So, but if you are a mother, who actually tie the door up and stopping your children from going out to protect them. You are yoking them as in Chinese we say yok. And you are trying to protect them in a certain way with those uh, uh, threats, ropes, okay? Or because they are your heritage, they are your line, they're your lineage. So it really depends on where you're looking at the whole thing. If you're trying to get in as a offender, you, are, you will understand the symbol as offensive. But if you are from the perspective of someone from inside, you will be understanding that sim the same symbol as a defensive symbol. So this is actually a real Chinese uh, writing. Oh, by the way, this is also a real uh, Sumerian writing. It actually means where people meet, you know, meeting, you know, so this is actually a completely opposite depending on the context. So this is a Chinese writing of fan. Fan means offense. So because in the old days, it, they all used to dam swampy land with water, with all these wild growth of trees, a jungle uh, to block the place. So you will see that the Chinese fan is definitely exactly the way you, you pronounce fence. Uh, again, I try to stress the, the way that it depends on where, how you look at it from outside or from inside to understand the world. So um, I think I will stop here. It's getting um, too heavy. Um, thank you very much for bearing with me. Uh, I don't have a script with me. Everything just come out of my head after I prepare the, uh, all those slides. I hope you begin to look at the world in a more relaxed way, not from a single perspective. I truly hope that only by that way, uh, this troubled world now can, can we can sit together to solve more problems. Much for watching. Bye.